but I'm quite convinced that writing them out by hand helps me learn them. Hi there, Steve Kaufman. And today I want to talk about writing, uh, but I want to talk about the importance of writing by hand. Uh, so if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. And uh, if you follow me on a podcast service, please leave a comment. I do appreciate it. So I did a video recently about writing and I pointed out that uh, many people want to improve their ability to write in a language. And I gave some suggestions uh, on how we can improve our ability to write and to write well. I also talked about the importance of writing as a strategy to improve in a language, to improve our comprehension, to improve our ability to, to express ourselves even orally, our ability to speak. Writing is, is a strategy, is, a, is an activity that helps us learn. In that video, I said that it's very important in any language learning activity that that activity be meaningful to say me, the learner, to us as learners. And I always find it difficult to write uh, in the languages that I've been learning recently at any rate, because I don't like to maintain a diary. I don't maintain a diary in my own language. So it would be a bit unnatural for me to maintain a diary in the language I'm learning. Although people maybe who don't maintain a language in their own, a diary in their own language may be, you know, uh, motivated to start a diary in the language that they are learning. I, I admitted, or I, I stressed the fact that writing is good for our, you know, language skills. It's a good thing to do, but you have to do it in a way that makes sense. So if I have, uh, say, email communication with someone, then I might be inclined to write. Uh, to be honest, I might still rely on Google Translate because it's, it's available as a tool. It, all I want to do is communicate. I might just write something up in English, get the translation, read it over, uh, and then send it along. So again, it's difficult to get yourself in a situation where you do something th that you feel you should be doing in the language and that is, is natural to you. I have found that I very rarely write in the languages that I'm learning today. However, that wasn't always the case. Two of the, let's say that the languages that I speak the best are besides English, French, and Japanese, and Chinese. So I have very rarely written in Japanese, but I have written a lot in French and Chinese. And in both cases, I wrote by hand because in those days, there were no other options. I wrote my Chinese by hand and I wrote, I was a student in France for three years. I had to write, you know, exams in French. I wrote by hand in Chinese. Uh, after one year of study, we had to write the, I had to write the British foreign service exam. I had to compose a diplomatic note in Chinese. I had to translate uh, newspaper editorials from English into Chinese. I had to be able to write. And so I did a lot of writing. And I'm quite convinced that writing by hand helped me learn Chinese characters. If I were learning Chinese characters today, would I write them all by hand, uh, out by hand as I did then? Or would I rely on some computer system? I don't know because I'm not in the position of having to learn Chinese characters today, 50 years later. But I'm quite convinced that writing them out by hand helps me learn them. Yet I know that I rarely, if I, I do not write by hand in any language other than English today, I write, I can write Chinese, Japanese, Russian, whatever. I will either type or I will use dictation on my iPhone. I don't write by hand. Uh, in Russian, I can hardly read the cursive version of the Cyrillic alphabet. Uh, basically everything I do is on the computer. That's the world that I live in. So if I were, even today, I, I, I have never tried to write Persian or Arabic. Okay. So, uh, as I said, I don't write very much in the languages that I have learned or I type on the computer, but I don't write by hand, but writing is a great way to improve your skills in the language, your comprehension, but particularly your ability to output, to speak, because you can look words up. So it's kind of like an assist to get to speaking. Well, I'm going to show you an even further more helpful assist to getting you to output. It's what we call the integrated review, which is a new activity. I have it on my iPad and iPhone. It'll be available on all platforms in the new year. 
So in Turkish, for example, if I go to my mini stories and I just pick a mini story here, doesn't really matter, uh, whatever, here. So obviously I've gone through this, a number of words in yellow, I may have forgotten some of them. I go to my sentence view, bu ölüm ve köpeği Maxin hikayesi, the story about son and uh, dog Max. Uh, let's go to a longer, you know, next sentence. So, um, you know, let's say I don't really remember. Ölüm, M is my son. So I often move, you know, uh, words back to, could be. Know, could be, to not known. And then if they don't show up, I have to go hide and show. Now I can do this review. So a cub was a Yavruyken, is when he was a, a cub, Yavruyken. like a small dog, a puppy. Uh, my son, Olum, Olum, Kupi, dog. Kupi. Kupi. So now I have to put the story together. So A uh. goes to the front. This is a story, Bu, Bu. Uh, a story of my uh, son and his dog, Max. Olum, Olum. V, v. Uh, Kupi, Kupi. Maxin, Maxin. Hikais. Okay, so good. I can review these again if I want. I close it. I go to the next sentence. So Oloman da onje hich kope olmade. So daha onje daha onje was before. So we again study the sentence earlier before is daha onje kope kope da kope olajak olajak. And now I have to put the sentence together again. Again, I have a capital O, so that Oluman. obviously starts the sentence. Oloman, Oloman, um, da da önce hiç, hiç köpeği, köpeği olmadı. Correct. Okay, now this might seem simple. Uh, many stories are easier. If I go to, let's say, for the fun of it, let's go to a language that I haven't been doing. I did kind of poke around in, say Dutch. And uh, so here's one, and uh, view sentence, okay. Um, now, this is more difficult here. Uh, let's see, okay, here, a shorter sentence. So, now it's after, now het ontstaan, ontstaan, pas echt, now let's listen to it. In de 19e eeuw, na het ontstaan van België in 1830, veranderen de taalverhoudingen in het Brusselse pas echt. Okay. Now, study it. Okay, only uh, pas. Pas. Uh, really, for the first time, pas echt. Pas echt. Eeuw. 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 Correct. And... Uh, Let's see, ontstaan, ontstaan. Na, na het, het ontstaan. ontstaan, na het ontstaan, men, men. Uh, taalverhoudingen, Verhoudingen. na, na. Is after, as though, as if, alsof. alsof, it wasn't in the sentence, but they throw a few, you know, ringers in there. So, in, in. Uh, the, the 19th, 19th, Eeuw, eeuw, na. Eeuw, na. Uh, na is after. Even het, het ontstaan. Ontstaan, ontstaan uh, of Belgium, van België. Van België. België, van België. Uh, veranderende. Veranderende. Taalverhoudingen in. In. Uh, Oké, okay, so the ontstaan van België in 18... I forgot that guy. Put him in there. Uh, veranderen de taalverhoudingen in het, het Br Brusselse. Brusselse. Pas echt. There we go. So then I can look at the words again. Anyway, that gives you an idea of how useful this uh, uh, integrated review can be in getting you to start to kind of, you know, assist the output with the training wheels on in languages, even ones that you're not that familiar with. I hope that was useful. But if I really wanted to improve in those languages, probably I should write by hand. And there is research that shows that not only for learning languages, but for learning anything. If we write by hand, 
And we're cultivating those motor skills in our brain to enable us to write and to, to write about a subject or to write in a language that we are learning, doing it by hand is more effective than typing, more effective than just listening and reading. So I, I'm quite convinced that there is significant benefit in writing by hand in order to improve our skills. But it's also a matter of say choice. If I spend a lot of time writing by hand, then that's time that I'm not spending listening and reading. So my, the, my vocabulary growth is more limited. Uh, it's a, it's kind of the, the way I feel when I'm say on link and I'm doing sort of vocabulary review in sentence mode. We have these matching pairs now in the, uh, certainly the iOS app followed by the sort of assembling of words in a sentence, which I love doing and I find very addictive, but all the time I'm spending doing that and nailing those things down that's time that I'm not acquiring more words and getting my brain used to hearing the language and reading the language. So there's, it's always a matter of, of what you want to do. Obviously when I was learning Chinese, it was a full-time job. I had the whole day to devote to learning Chinese. I could spend an hour or two writing. I could spend an hour or two listening or reading. So there was, I, I didn't have to decide as I do today, how am I going to spend the hour, hour and a half a day that I have available for language learning. However, if you have the time, I'm quite convinced that writing by hand is a very good discipline uh, to improve your language skills. But overall, I think writing is something that's perhaps neglected today and, and maybe is really only necessary if we are in a, a situation where we need to be able to write in a foreign language for academic or professional reasons. And then uh, you can refer to the videos that I did on writing to see what my recommendations are with regard to, you know, how to improve your writing. But in so far as writing by hand is concerned, oh, and that reminds me when I did my video about writing and I said that, uh, you know, keeping a diary is not something that I would do because it's not something I'm used to doing. Somebody commented that somehow, uh, I was misleading people, uh, and that I saw, you know, writing practice, uh, or the writing about maintaining of a diary. It wasn't clear what the reference was too, but that I saw this as competition to link and that therefore I was uh, discouraging people from doing it. That's not the case. No learning activity, let's say a learning activity that is totally unrelated to link is a competition to link. Different learning activities are all complementary. You don't have to only have one learning activity, one learning app, one approach to language learning, whatever you do, uh, is beneficial. Uh, remember language learning is a matter of your attitude and the time you spend with the language, whatever gets you involved with the language is good. That's not competition. That's basically synergy from my point of view. So again, I refer you to the two videos I did on writing or a few years ago, and I hope that this is of interest to you. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.